Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Play Skies of Arcadia Revisited. I'm Nye, and we have finally got enough money to take care of Crescent Isle. So let's go on in here, and we'll see about paying off these two gentlemen so they can actually give us a base, uh, a ba yeah, a base worth a damn. There we go. I'm sitting here thinking I should be saying bathe, and that's not exactly right. Yes, I have the 25,000 gold that you need to modify my ship, so let's give that to him. Took a little bit of farming. It took about 20, maybe 30 minutes. Just fought around in this place a lot. Woohoo! We can fortify the shell for us. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, and then Ismail also needs 25,000 gold to start building our new headquarters, so we're going to give that to him. And now Ismail's going to dance a little bit, or just stroke his beard, you know, that too. This will be the best investment of our life, that's, I hope that's true. And he wishes this base wasn't so secret because he wants to show everyone how awesome it is. That's pretty fantastic. The new hull of the Delphinus will be done by tomorrow morning, and we'll be able to go after the crystals, which means we have to decide where to go next. Aka is kind of excited, we're going to have our own base, the Delphinus will be able to go just about anywhere. And, uh, yeah... It's a good day. It's definitely a good day. I love getting the base done. But Aka has to bring up that we're not quite done yet. We need a new flag. Everybody had to do it earlier. Everybody had to uh, decide on how they were going to make theirs. And now we have to decide who's going to win. Enrique apparently forgot about uh, ha about his duties here as the judge. So here comes Vices. So Vice decided that he wants us to be a sword plus a skull plus wings. As far as I can tell, this is supposed to be the canonical... Uh, like the canonical flag. This is the one that always comes up when you search up blue rogues. So, I don't really like this one, though. Do notice, though, it does look a little bit like Vice. It does have the, the eye patch and all that jazz. So then Aka brings up hers. So she thinks the skull thing was completely overdone, and you know what? I happen to agree. And she wanted to go with something quick and cunning, like a cat that looks like her. So there's the goggles again. There's the winking eye. We just saw that. Uh, and uh, notice that the... You know, little pigtail things coming off the cat's head. I thought those were paws to begin with, but I think those are pigtails just like Aka's. So, uh, <laughs> even Fina comments, Aka, the cat looks just like you. And Aka says she had to give cats a personality. You might have gotten a little bit carried away. Just just a little bit. Just just a snooch. Okay, so now it's Fina's turn. And Fina thinks that skulls are a little bit scary, and she wanted something to be nice and happy. Because we're, we're, we're happy pirates. We don't do all, all that black pirate stuff. So she brings together a, uh, a dolphin with wings. And this is the one I normally pick. I'm not going to do it this time. It doesn't matter, actually. Uh, what you pick doesn't matter at all. But uh, there was, at one time, I believe, a little bit of speculation about um, if the choice here had to do with a little bit of a romance subplot that goes on between Aka and Fina. I, as far as I'm aware, there isn't one. But if there is a little bit of romance that goes on at the end of the game. I believe it happens no matter what you do. Uh -huh. So we decide which one we like. I'm going to go with Aka's flag because I almost never pick it. I usually pick either uh, Vice or Fina. Uh, there is no correct answer for this. It is not a swashbuckler choice, and uh, that's all it is. There's a little bit of uh, different text depending on who you have, and I believe that you can change the flag at just about any time, so it doesn't really matter. But it does show up in a couple cutscenes. So Vice is getting a little bit of hungry, and apparently Brabham, while we were talking about that, has made dinner. He's apparently extremely good at uh, at making dinner really, really fast. So it looks like we're going to be spending the night in our new headquarters, even though there's nothing here. And we'll just get a quick, uh, we are sleeping sound. No, wait, no, there's a cutscene, right. <coughs> Sorry, I'm a little bit sick, a little bit out of it. So now we're talking about what we have to do next. So starting tomorrow, we should start searching for the remaining moon crystals. And Enrique hopes this time he won't get air sick, which nobody's going to let him get over that. And we're talking about it, to uh, talking about it constantly. And uh, Aka wants to ask Fina about something. How does Fina know Admiral Ramirez? It's a really good question, actually, because every time his name comes up, Fina's immediately interested, you know, constantly going, what's going on here? But, uh, you know, Aka even comments on that. She knows an awful lot about him, knows that we should have uh, surrendered and all that jazz. So how does how does Fina know him? Aka realizes that it could have been a bad idea for her to say something like that. So, you know, she says it's probably okay if we don't talk about it, but, uh, you know, Fina wants to talk. She wants to tell us what's going on because there's a little bit of a backstory. So we go to backstory mode. We know that Fina is a Sylvite, descendant of the Silver Civilization. Apparently everybody knows that now. It's common knowledge. You know, it's in the press. But apparently Ramirez is a Sylvite as well, if you couldn't guess that already by the fact that he had a blade with a Silver Moonstone built in. He was their best warrior. He can channel the power of the Silver Moon through his blade. I just got finished talking about that. Making it short enough, sharp enough to cut through light, which is an ability that I thought only Death Scythe could do. They grew up together. I hear... I don't know about you guys, but I'm listening to the music in the background, and I swear to God, it sounds like Knives theme from Trigun. So a long time ago, they were best friends. 
he didn't used to be so heartless and evil and cruel and mean and, you know, straight-faced and all that jazz. He used to care for her like a little sister. I, I can't see it. I honestly can't. I've, as many times as I've played through this game, I have never seen the light-hearted, uh, light-hearted side of Ramirez. Uh, when she, they, when, then when the Sylvites heard that the Faloons were trying to reawaken the Gigas, Ramirez volunteered to come down and stop them. He was on a journey to search for the crystals by himself, which was probably a bad idea. You know, you never want to do that. You know that whenever the main hero goes by himself to do something, something bad always happens. You should always go with a party. But shortly after starting his quest, they lost track of him. Yeah, they never even dreamed that he would join forces with the Fluent Empire. You know, you want, to, you want to join a party, because if you're dead, there's no one to lift you up with a Phoenix Down or, or a Raze or, you know, Rissalem or anything like that. You need a second person to do that. Just at least one more. Uh, they never dreamed he would join forces. They were the people he was sent here to stop, but he joined them because the game needs a villain. And Galician's just a little bit too much of a wimp to be a villain. And Fina th says that uh, the Ramirez she knew is hopefully not gone forever. Good luck with that. Enrique brings up his side of the story. That's a really uncomfortable position you seem to be sitting in, Enrique. Are you, were, were you thinking about this before you sat down like that? Uh, not only is he one of the Valuan's greatest swordsmen, but he's also a master strategist. He used to be Galician's vice captain. I didn't even think Galaxy knows Ramirez has passed. I swear to God, he's been playing, like, Crusader Kings 2 for the past ten years. Like, he's been getting really good at it. And, uh, Vice, you know, Aka looks, uh, just, Fina looks upset, you know? And so now we have a swashbuckler choice. We need to instill her with confidence or try to cheer her up. Uh, I think that there is no wrong answer with this one, but I'm gonna go with instill her with confidence. And that sounds like that was the right answer indeed. We're going to find out what happened to Ramirez, or die try- No, 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 we're just going <laughs> to- we're just going to find out what happened, we're not going to say that. What's important now is to keep pushing forward, don't ever forget, yada, 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 blah, blah, blah. Feeling you're not alone, we're here with you, yada, 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 blah, blah, blah. You're one of our friends, yada, yada, blah, blah. We've only known you for a short while, blah, blah, but I too consider you a friend, yada, yada, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. Okay, so, there's a lot of friendship going on, lots of mushy feelings, and Fina's crying. You know, because we make girls cry all the time. Tomorrow, we continue our search for the rest of the moon crystals. We will start early. And here comes the sly cat eyes off of Aka. You sure you can get up on time without servants to wake you up? He always gets up on his own. <laughs> there's no beds. You're sleeping on dirt. Like, and there's the evil cancer fish everywhere. You gotta remember that. This is not a good place to be sleeping. But there you go. So, there's our sleep music. And now we're just casually waiting for the game to load up the next sequence. Okay, so now we are inside the uh, Delphinus once more. Now it's been fixed. Notice the uh, flags in the background, so it's there. And now we have uh, a much more fleshed out map on the table than the one we actually have. And it doesn't seem to have anything to do with the actual land masses that I have in my map. Just, just think about that for a while. So where should we head next? In the east, there's a land that basks in the light of the blue moon. That land is known as Yafutoma. They harness the powers of the blue moon, yes, we, we, we gathered that, thank you, and have control over wind and water. Their culture is very different. Yeah, typically they would be, yes. You know, typically cultures are different depending on which land you go to. And Enrique is trying to remember some details, because apparently the Valuans know about these people. And Enrique says that according to Valuan historians, Yafutoma is a country far east of Nasser and scattered across several small islands. Uh, the people are protected by scales, and they eat by manipulating two sticks to pick up their food. Now... Do notice how he words that, manipulating two sticks. Well, you know that Aka is going to imagine this. So they eat with sticks, are protected by scales. Obviously, they must be fish people, and they're very weird with sticks. I don't know how she's imagining these sticks. You know, obviously, we're talking about a uh, Asian uh, group here. The scales would be scale mail, and the two sticks would be chopsticks. But I don't know how you would get these two large sticks she's thinking of. Uh, I don't understand how she thinks fish people. I mean, I really, I, no, no, no. And what's with all the water everywhere? I don't get it. I do like they put cupel in this one, though, being eaten. And Vice even comments is that he doesn't think it's what she's imagining. I'm pretty sure it's not. She wonders what these strange wind and water people look like, and she can't imagine eating with two steaks. Well, let's get off that topic. She was hoping to be able to eat all kinds of exotic food on her trip, but uh, she doesn't know how to eat with sticks. It's really easy. You stab stuff and shovel it into your mouth. To get to Yafutoma, we should sail around the southern tip of Nasser. Some time ago, during the Valu and Nasser War, a cape was discovered by the invading Valuan forces, and uh, that cape was named Cape Victory. <laughs> There's only a city there called Esperanza. If anyone knows how to get to Yafutoma, it would be the people let's there. Go. Okay, well, we're heading south of Nasser, apparently. Everyone to their stations, and let's go! 
So, uh, because we did the whole thing that we just did, because we paid $25,000 to Brabham in order to, uh, upgrade our ship, now we're gonna be able to do a lot of things. And one of the most important things we're gonna be able to do is change our, uh, equipment to the white map. Right there. Which will, uh, reduce the amount of engagements I'm about to have. So, uh, one of the things we get is because we have the, uh, upgraded ship, now we can fly through, um, uh, sky rifts with no problem. And we can also uh, fly through rocks, uh, rock walls. Okay, I'm looking for a... There's an invisible thing right about here. And I'm looking for it. It always gives me trouble finding this one. Should be in this general area. Come on, where are you? Should be right around here. Oh, come on! I found it. Okay, so, full disclosure, this is the second time I had to record this episode. The first time, I accidentally set my recording to end after, like, a minute and a half or so. It was some really short period of time. And so, I recorded a full 30-minute episode, but all of it was audio. I had no video to go with it, so now I'm re-recording it. Uh, so that first episode's lost to the annals of time. And this took me just as long the first time. Okay. Seriously, this is kind of nuts. It's supposed to be around here somewhere. Is it over here? Is it over in this area? There it is. Okay. Balloon flower. A curious plant whose colorful fruit sways in the wind like a balloon. When the thin outer shells pop, a sweet fragrance is released. It was often seen throughout the world in more peaceful times, but uh, uh, of late, the fruits are seldom seen. So there's the balloon flower. So to kind of prove the point, when it comes to uh, this, we can pass right through, no problems. Knows the sky went purple because we are uh, now in the lands of ice, I believe, if I remember correctly. And I really don't want to be there right now. It's not that we can't be, it's just I don't really feel like it. So we're going to skip that for right now. We'll come back there later. Okay, so we're just going to go south again, and I want to follow the Valuan rock wall. So this is the northernmost side of the continent of Valua right here. Uh, notice that it does get icy right here. This is supposed to be a hint, uh, visually, that we are currently in the lands of ice, or very close to them at least. You know, we also get the visual cue from the uh, uh, cloud ceiling here that we're also in Valua. Here's this rock wall. We saw this uh, right here back when we uh, were um, dealing with Rock Nom. Uh, unfortunately, there's nobody to get rid of it as far as I'm aware. So we're going to keep on going around this way. So here's the Stone City, which was one of the few things we have to get in this area. And uh, the ruins of a settlement built into a solid rock wall with countless passageways connecting the dwellings. The homes appear to have been abandoned hastily, but no evidence has been found that explains exactly what happened. So that's right there. It looks a little bit like the Hanging Gardens to me, but I don't know if you guys might agree with that. Uh, I always found that um, it was always really creepy in the game. If you really, if you really think about it, uh, with some of these uh, some of these discoveries that we get, especially stuff like that. They're always really, really creepy sounding, right? I mean, they're always, uh... Is there something around here I need? No, so we're just gonna go this way. But yeah, they're always really creepy sounding, and they, they lead you to wonder what exactly happened, because they could just say the stone rain came, or whatever it is, the, uh, the calamity, what, you know... In insert your name of the apocalypse here. Let's see, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. It's really creepy. They could just say that that settlement was hastily abandoned because of the... Now, this, this, there's something back here. I know there's something back here. Yeah, they could say that, you know, the uh, settlement got abandoned because of the rain and, uh, you know, moonstones, all that jazz. The thing that destroyed the rest of the planet. They could say that. Okay, there's a thing up there. I can't do anything about that right now. I won't be able to do anything about that for a long time. But uh, if I remember... There it is. That's the rock I'm looking for. Okay. This is rock just sitting out here in the middle of nowhere by itself. Yeah, this is the Philosopher's Stone. Philosophy Stone. 
Though my body may age and the sun may set, the soul of a sailor still burns inside me. As long as I can dream, I shall travel the skies. As long as there are skies, my journey shall continue. A Sailor's Philosophy by Anonymous. I knew there was something over here. But, uh, yeah. They, they don't... They don't say anything. They make it sound in some of these discoveries as if something really bad has happened in some of these places. Maybe it's the inherent creepiness of just empty places. Places where people once were, where you can look around and see all the memories that are there and you have no explanation as to why people have left or in some cases you do have an explanation why people left but the empty place still remains and it still looks very creepy think about places like uh how's it pronounced Pripyat I think that's it the place just outside Chernobyl I know that uh I, I remember hearing that it's being uh or it may gradually become occupied and there are I think that they said they're allowed to uh um host tours there nowadays but um like tourists and such but uh I don't know it's just it's really creepy to think of just some empty place just sitting there you have no idea why it left and even though there are some very obvious reasons as to why they have left uh the game just, just doesn't tell you so this place wasn't here last time we were here this is Gordo's after you beat Gordo the round uh once you I believe you have to get Crescent Isle but once you get Crescent Isle you can now come to Gordo's here uh, and uh, there's a couple things you want to do here. The first, of course, is get this Cham sitting right over here. Here's Gordo, but he's not going to really do anything for us right now. We're going to need to talk to him later on for a really obnoxious side quest. But, uh, so Gordo is here. And then, but most importantly, is Domingo. This is the second time we've seen him. And, uh, the first time he challenged us to find discoveries faster than him. This is now, uh, now he knows about us. We're legendary. He wants to know if we know about him. Uh, we might not remember, honestly, because it's been a while, we had a lot of people, and you weren't quite the most important one. Uh, so he's just sitting here, and we're just going to ask him, does he want to join us? So this is kind of interesting. If you follow along with how I've played, you know I've been catching a lot of discoveries really, really fast. So we ask him to help us find the discoveries, and Domingo decided to reject us and says the only people that he teams up with are beautiful women or men who are better treasure hunters than he. And he says that if we can find at least 30 discoveries, he will admit that we're better, but he doubts that there's anybody who can actually do that. Now, if you have not found 30 discoveries by now, this is your chance to go and find them, come back and get Domingo. Thing is, now, and just about every time I've ever played this game, I always have 30 discoveries uh, by now. And if you do it, Vice actually comes up and goes, I wouldn't talk so fast, we've already found that many. And Domingo is just flabbergasted. You've actually found more than 30 discoveries. That's a very small amount. There's some 86 discoveries in the game, something like that. Maybe it's 84. No, it's 89. There's a lot of discoveries, so just 30 is a very, very small amount. But uh, we're truly a treasure hunter. He's going to join us on our quest. And uh, we've got two very beautiful women. How can he resist? So, yeah. Domingo has joined our crew as a lookout. Moving on. So nothing else to do in Gordo's. As I said, we'll be back here for a side quest sometime later on. But for the time being, we're going to move on. So back on that previous topic. Uh, yeah. If you look... And especially if you read a lot of the descriptions of stuff, uh, of the discoveries in the game. Not necessarily just the, uh, like, hidden flavor if you talk to people, things like that. There's a lot of creepiness going on around Skies. You know, we can, uh, maybe at the end of the episode I'll actually go through the list of the stuff we've already found. But just think about some of the stuff we have found in the game so far. There's a very large hammer just sitting, doing nothing. It's hinted that that may be from one of the Gigas, uh, especially, uh... Uh, what's his name? The guy, Grendel. Uh, there's a, the giant's throne. There's, uh, I ha you haven't even seen half of them. The Valuan Palace is just sitting there abandoned. Like, there's a lot of this stuff. And if you look through, and especially when we get, oh, there's, there's some, especially the Land of Ice, I cannot wait to show you guys to act, to kind of prove the point. There's a lot of creepiness in Sky. There's a lot of this hints that in this very shiny and happy looking place that we have here, uh, that things are not quite as nice as that, that as they seem. You know, even if you ignore the fact that right now I am walking through a city of a people who used to be incredibly technologically advanced, had an observatory on top of a uh, mountain, had a city in the clouds, um, and got nuked literally back to the Stone Age, because uh, that's basically where we are now. Y you know, if you ignore that fact, we still have a very happy-sounding place. It's very bright green. 
you know, people t seem to be pretty happy with their lot in life. They don't really remember back when life was really good, when technology was fantastic. If you go to Sailor's Island, people are dancing, having a party, you know, and then you go to someplace like Valua, where, you know, lower cities full of people who want to kill themselves because life is so bad. Uh, it's, it's kind of amazing how dark this game gets if you really look into it, if you really think about it. You know, let's, let's ignore the fact that there's a bunch of islands that are just kind of floating in space and that some uh, baby who's crawling could literally crawl off an island and fall forever until they die from either impact or high pressure. Okay, we talked to this girl. So, uh, getting off the depressing subjects. So we have this girl right here whose name I believe is Merida, or something to that effect. Yep, Merida. And uh, she comments that her ship is very powerful and she hopes she'll board a ship one day. It's a hint that she wants to join a ship. Uh, she's, and she wrote a letter to Quetya and sent it into the sky. She put a paper in a bottle asking for strong words to aid her cause. So that uh, bottle uh, in a balloon, the balloon of the bottle that I picked up in Sailor's Island in like the fourth episode all the way back there. Um, I picked it up for a reason. This is why. So if you didn't already pick it up, you'd have to go get that bottle and then come back and get Merida. But uh, because I picked it up early, uh, we can get Merida a little bit faster than normal. So kind of important that. A lot of this stuff that I've been doing as we've gone along, uh, a lot of the uh, ways I've been doing stuff in the game, especially when it comes to like treasure chests and uh, pickups, things like that, I'm trying to do things as quickly and efficiently as possible. So, for instance, pick up the bottle before I come to get Merida. But I'm also not doing things in a particularly good order. And the reason I say that is because a lot of the times you have to come back to a place you've already been to pick something up. So I could always pick up a treasure chest later. I could always pick up a discovery later on in the line. Uh... You know, stuff I could do later on that I don't necessarily need to do now because I'll be back in the area later on. You can always do it that way. If you don't want to, you know, pick up all the treasures in this area, you can always... That treasure chest that's back there in the big bar tree, uh, the one behind the painting, you can always pick that up when you get Merida. You don't actually have to go back there. Uh, but uh, I find that if I don't do things, you know, as soon as I can, I tend to forget about them. And uh, that'll sometimes get me into a mess. Like now, I'm actually redoing this entire Let's Play because I missed, like, six chests in the entire game. That's not a lot, but uh, because I missed them, I need to go back and replay because we didn't get to see the super secret final boss, and uh, because I'm a little bit OCD about it and I want to 100% it, I've actually never 100 percent the game before. So, uh, yeah, that's a big thing. So now that we're back here, let's go run onto the ship here. Notice sometimes crashed ship is still here. It's still floating out there in space. Let's talk to Hots. So, hi Hans, how's it going? Yep, we're a captain. Congratulations to us. He's working as a factory technician. When his stint is over, he wants to join us on our ship. And I'd love to have him be on our ship as the engineer, of course. Uh, it'd be great to have him, but unfortunately he has to, this is something we have to do later on. Uh, he can't join us right now because he's currently working in the factory. I don't know where the factory is. I'm assuming it's sometime, somewhere in the base of the ship. By the way, speaking of this ship, look at this for a second. So this is the ship. It's just kind of floating here, but it looks like it's crashed on the side of the uh, side of the building. And notice the th the uh, like little blocks of wood that are just holding it there. That is terrifying. <laughs> like you're sitting there, and you're going, at what point are those blocks gonna give up, or at what point is the engine gonna fail and it's gonna fall down to the earth below? It is kind of terrifying. It's just, it's just all these little things about skies. I love this game so much, but. When you think about it, there's all this really terrifying stuff going on that the game doesn't address. It doesn't want to talk about it, you know? It doesn't want to say to you, oh, by the way, people fall off all the time. It doesn't want to say that, you know, ships just vanish into the void. And we're not talking about Bermuda Triangle here. We're talking about ships whose engines failed. And they just fell into the endless sky beneath them until they, uh, until everybody perished from being crushed to death. It's just, it's, it's just weird. It really is. So the other guy we're gonna go to, I'm, I'm trying to get off the topic, but it's just something, it's something I love about skies. That's behind such a happy-go-lucky exterior. You know, there's some really messed up stuff in this game. But, uh, in, instead of talking about that, we're going to climb up here. We're going to get our last crew member for the episode. So it's a potential for three uh, in this uh, in this area. 
I'm only going to be able to pick up two right now, just because the third one, Hans, isn't ready to go yet. But, uh, if you come up here, we saw this guy before. This is Tika Tika. Hello. He wants to know if we've flown around this area, and have we seen a ship with all women sailors? Sometimes he sees them flying nearby. They're very different from the women here. Even with his eyes, he cannot always see where they go, and he's very curious about them. Well, Vice comments that maybe, maybe he's talking about the village of the Ixaness, which is the all-female village that we found uh, the first time we passed through. Yeah, Tika Tika says it must be it. There's really a village of only women. He's been searching for it for many years. Well, of course you have. Uh, we're apparently the best sailor he knows. He wants us to take him on the ship with us, and uh, he wants to join the crew. He's going to join us. He's, gonna, he's been looking for someone who can make good use of his incredible eyes. With his eyes, he can see the enemy from far away. Other things, too, as clear as day. This will be useful to us. So that's our uh, other guy. So he's our second lookout. So if we go into our uh, crew change here. So we got Domingo and Tika Tika. These are two choices for there. So uh, Domingo will increase our chance of delivering critical hits if he's an active crew member. Whereas Tika Tika increases the chance our torpedoes actually hit enemies. I kind of prefer the critical hits, to be honest. And then for Jesters, we've got Pow and Merida. So if we actually use the crew command, Pow will raise our chance of attacking first for an entire turn. Which is not all that amazing. We don't really need it. All Merida does, though, is increase our ship's value, which is important for a very specific part of uh, uh, Vice the Sky King. Our ship has to be worth, like, I forget what the exact number is. It has to be worth the most it can possibly be worth, uh, as well as having a certain number of items that uh, are there just for the opulence, basically. They don't actually do anything, but when equipped to your ship, like, they have, like, a space heater. Stuff like that. Okay, well, that's, uh... That's about all I have for us, actually. Oh, I have a couple things we're going to be doing next episode, uh, but, but all of them take a while. So, I think I'm going to cut this one off a little bit earlier than I would typically do. I know uh, some people are not going to be happy about that. I do apologize. But uh, there's nothing going on in this immediate area that we can actually still do, and everything I would want to do is either a while away or take some time. So, uh, yeah. I'll let you guys go for now. And when I return, uh, we're going to be doing a lot of fighting. A lot of fighting. Hmm. I did want to show off a couple things, though. Just real quick. So we got Enrique. He's got some super moves. Let's go ahead and unlock them. This one is the important one. This is the move you want. This is the move you need. Justice Shield. It creates a defensive barrier for one turn, and all physical damage received is cut in half. Uh, this is everything that's not a spell, basically. I mean, uh, well, it's not true. Special abilities are physical damage, so it reduces everything that's not a spell. And then uh, you have Aka, who's doing her Delta Shield, who negates all magic. Not magic damage, just magic. So the only thing that can hit us has to go through half damage. The unfortunate thing about this is it kind of removes Enrique as a viable attacker. So all you'll have when you're playing optimally is uh, you'll have Vice attacking. And that's going to be about it. Vice is going to be the only one who's going to do anything. It's kind of obnoxious, unfortunately. But, uh, just the way it is. What am I going to give to him? Uh, eh, uh hmm. Why, why, why does... Fina, what are you... Oh, 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 okay. I don't know when that happened, but, uh... Let's give Warriors room to you. And, uh... No, not Cuba Spike. Oh, I forgot about this. Uh, I forgot. This is, this is me. Uh, when Fina gets captured, all of her stuff is unequipped. Same with Aka. So, I've been running around for a while with nothing equipped on these two. No wonder they were taking so much damage in those boss fights that we did. That, that's nuts. That really is. Okay. Vice is good, right? Yeah, Vice is good. And uh, Enrique, I, I'll deal with him later. So, super moves are one of the things I wanted to show off, just to show that they're there. Uh, so, Enrique has his. We have no Moonberries left, but the only thing I really need... I have Vice's level 5. Uh, Aka... Delta Shield's basically the only thing that she's got that's good. I'll eventually upgrade her, the rest of her, but she's that's it. And I need Fina's level 5, but it's very expensive. And Enrique's level 3 is just... It's not amazingly good. We'll, we'll get to it eventually, I promise, but that's about it. And the last thing I just want to show off real quick... Uh, is just, I just wanted to point out the journal, because I said I was going to do this. So the discoveries, we have stuff that is just kind of a little bit creepy, just a little bit. Uh, what, what's, what's, what's good examples? Stuff like the, uh, 
there's a lot of stuff in Ixataka. Uh, stuff like the Great Bird and the Golden Man referencing back to when the ci- ci- uh, civilization was great, especially the Great Bird, because there's a lot of, of those markers that used to be there and that are now gone. You got stuff like Beak Rock and the gigantic sky, uh, sky anemone that just eats freaking ships. Uh, in the Ixataka Palace, just abandoned, just sitting there. Then we have stuff like the Mysterious Rings and the Will-O-Wisps. Uh, that it almost makes you think aliens. Almost, but not quite. You have stuff like that. Rocks nested another gigantic creature that eats ships. You have stuff like the Lighthouse Ruins, Ancient Palace. Uh, the Skull Rock. We just have the skull that's just sort of sitting there. It may have been made specifically for Decat, but, you know, stuff like that. Um, the Turtala Pole doesn't do anything. Just sort of sits there. It could have been a grave, for all we know. Uh, the Wings of Gold, the flying ship that continues to fly, even when there's no one there. Uh, you know, it's just stuff like that. I don't know. It just has this very, very... a little bit of a creepy feel to it. Okay, guys. Well, that is it for me. I will see you guys next time as we go and fight a bunch of people. Ta-ta.